So, what's next for Destiny 2? After the recent expansion on Destiny 2, The Witch Queen, the story has taken an interesting turn. After learning at the end of the season of The Lost that Savathun had essentially captured and taken the form of Osiris in order to learn more things around the light. Once found out, Savathun then revealed her true form but was held captive by Queen Mara Sav. She made a deal with Mara at the time and potentially free her from control of the Worm Gods, a deal that the Vanguard were very wary of at the time. Mara's ritual was successful at the time and she was able to capture Savathun's Worm but Savathun herself escaped. However, throughout Witch Queen we battle against Savathun and find out some really interesting information about a new character, the Witness, the Darkness and the Great Collapse. Today I want to discuss it all in a very high level detail but also discuss what's next for Destiny during the Witch Queen expansion, the direction the story may go and even next year's expansion, Lightfall. Make sure you guys leave a like on the video if you go ahead and enjoy, subscribe for more content coming but let's get into it. The Destiny 2 Witch Queen expansion has been out for a little over two weeks now and we've learnt a lot about the direction in which the Destiny story is going. After finding out the truth about Savathun's past, that the Witness essentially lied to her and her siblings, exclaiming that if they followed the path of the Traveller and inherited the light, it would lead to their apparent death, almost giving them only one option at the time, to travel to the depths and join forces with the darkness. These frail siblings will soon be claimed by the light. Unless we claim them first, we will tell the most cunning sibling of a cataclysm, the prophecy of great loss. We will feed her fear, her pride. We will say, young Sathona, the end is coming. A great cataclysm. A god wave. In the sky, there is only death. But salvation lies in the deep. Lead your sisters down. Your coming will spare their short lives. And you will be reborn. The Witch Queen. Savathun. They were tricked. Throughout the campaign and once we board Savathun's ship, we find that Savathun is able to wield the power of the light, and she also uses that to infuse her hive warriors as well, known as the Lucent Brood, with powers similar to that of the Guardians. It was in fact in a cutscene that showed us that Savathun did in fact die overlooking the Traveller on a cliffside, reciting the vow of the Vanguard. I saw the end before it happened. My own death, brought on by the separation from my power. And in these final moments, I looked to the sky. Hello, old friend. I've chased you for a long time. First as an enemy, then as a collector, and finally, now, a supplicant. What is it the Guardians say? Devotion inspires bravery. Bravery inspires sacrifice. And sacrifice... <coughs> Here we are. Oh, wouldn't it be clever of you if after everything you simply let me die? Because now the world, he 
begins to fade. A short time later, a ghost is released from the Traveller, resurrecting Savathun, and this is why she now wields the light. However, taking into account as well that when someone is revived by a ghost, they have no recollection of their past life, memories, or anything that happened prior. So yeah, Savathun can now wield the light, but what use is that if she can't remember anything? Well, throughout the campaign, we activate a series of past memories from Savathun. These memories are very, very interesting, and they even introduce us to a brand new character, and that will be the main focus of the next expansion, and predominantly the focus going forward into that expansion for the rest of the Witch Queen, which is The Witness. However, it was apparent that when we were doing this and looking back at Savathun's old memories, it turns out that we were in fact doing Savathun a favour at the time. Okay, so taking a couple of steps back in the story, after she was revived by that ghost, all of the memories of her past life and memories were completely wiped. She would not be able to remember a single thing that happened prior to her being revived by the ghost. However, what we were doing at the altar of reflection was in a sense looking back at her memories for her, reminding Savathun of what she was doing it for and why she wielded the light. Incredible that I could forget something like that, isn't it? Such a storied life, erased. The light offers us a fresh start. But if we don't know where we came from, how will we know where to go? I'm so grateful to you for reminding me, for telling my story. Later on within the campaign, we were given another lead by a ghost named Finch. Now, Finch was the ghost for one of the Hive members, and when that Hive member died, he essentially resented against the Hive and refused to revive that particular Hive member. Finch is now helping us through the campaign and giving us details around Savathun and essentially how we can take her down and filling in some of the lore gaps of the story. Hey, you know, get awkward out of the way first, I always say. This uh, pile of ash and bone used to be my... Uh... Actually, don't worry about it. All you need to know, us wandering ghosts gave into the hive believing we'd found purpose and, well, peer pressure's a hell of a thing. Huh? Finch gives us the lead to travel to the temple of Sathona, which was Savathun's name before she turned into a hive god. We came across the statue of Sathona holding a worm familiar, and we extract it, taking it back with us to Mars. However, when we were taking it back, the worm was in a calcified state, meaning that it was not currently active. Ikora takes the calcified worm familiar to a relic on Mars, which essentially allows them to reveal memories of young Sathona prior to the Traveler's arrival on her homeworld, named Fundament. In ancient times, the worm gods were sealed in the core of Fundament, whilst the Traveler prepared to grant the Proto-Hive a Golden Age, as it would later do for the Fallen and Humanity. The memory depicts the Witness coming up with a plan to try and trick Sathona, essentially into freeing some of the Worm Gods. The way that the Witness did this was by framing the Traveler, by saying that the Traveler would bring an imminent cataclysm which essentially would lead to their death. The Witness tricked and persuaded Sathona into joining the Darkness, travelling to the depths and ingesting the Worm Familiar. And this is where the three siblings became Hive Gods. After Ikora reveals this memory, the goal then on from her perspective was to stop Savathun at all costs. Savathun's overall goal was to try and pull the Traveller into her throne world and to try and essentially seal it away. However, one thing to take into account as well was when Savathun was revived by this ghost, all of her past memories were completely wiped. Which means that if we were to play and remind Savathun of Sathona's memory of being deceived by the Witness, it might sway her mind slightly. So, this was the overall goal. Savathun's ritual to pull the Traveller into the throne world was underway. Whilst the ritual was ongoing, we used Sathona's memory, which Ikora unlocked, to remind Savathun of what the Witness had done, how the Witness lied and pulled her towards the darkness. These frail siblings will soon be claimed by life. Unless we claim them first. What is this? How did you. We will tell the most cunning sibling of cannibalism. 
prophecy. Great loss. No. No, that's not what happened. The Traveler never came to us. We were forced to choose the Deep. How could I have missed this? In the end, we managed to disrupt this ritual and successfully kill Savathun. However, her ghost did in fact disappear, and to this day, we don't really know where it's gone. Savathun's body was extracted and imprisoned by the Vanguard and is being monitored currently to make sure that this ghost can't just come out of nowhere and revive her and resurrect her again. Now, it is after this that we do see the Witness for the first time, travelling towards us with their fleet, ready for one final stand. I think the Witness personally is going to reveal some absolutely mental plot twists in the story. I mean, in some of the additional quests in the story as well, we see Mara Sob acting pretty strange when we're trying to revive the Worm Familiar or Sathona's Worm Familiar. And it was mentioned that she actually had visions of the Witness as well. So I do think Mara is going to have something big to do with the story and the Witness moving forward from this point. This parasite is an opportunity to learn from humanity's greatest failure. Our collapse. But not ours alone. That day was as much a failure for the wit. Are you okay? I'm fine. As I said, our collapse was as much a failure for the witness and its followers. Similar to Osiris and Savathun, could the Witness or another entity essentially possess Mara Sov? I have a feeling that something big is going to happen, including Mara going forward in the Witch Queen DLC and potentially leading up to the next DLC as well. Not just that though, there's also a comment made by Mara Sov saying to keep the parasite nearby, it's bound to open its mouth again. So when you guys jump back into for new editions of the Destiny story, make sure you do keep an ear out for the Parasite in any new additions to the story or any new dialogue that it comes out with. With it being within the grenade launcher towards the end of one of those quests, make sure it's in your inventory. During one of the ends of these quest missions, the worm tells us what happened during the collapse, and that it was in fact Savathun that saved humanity from extinction from the darkness. Now, she didn't do this directly for humanity, but it was for the Traveler indirectly. Savathun earned the trust of the Witness, and then proceeded to deceive the Witness, ensuring to send it away amongst the stars so that it wouldn't be an imminent threat to the Traveler. Truth you seek. Humanity's collapse. Even the Witness deceived. The Witch Queen did its bidding, earned its trust, rode alongside to Apocalypse. Watched many burn, but the witness turned a violent gaze to Traveler. Witch Queen projected lies, clever deceptions wrapped in shadow. Tides turned, witness sent away, back amongst the stars. I mean, the Witness is almost a personal vendetta against the Traveler, right? If Savathun didn't deceive the Witness at that time, the state of the universe would have looked a lot different to what it does right now. The darkness probably would have ruled completely, and the Traveler probably imprisoned or destroyed completely. Within the recent Valve of the Disciples raid, we actually fight a main boss at the end called Rook, a disciple of the Witness. Rook originated from a world called Lubre and was a true and complete disciple of the Witness. Just briefly recapping on this as well, Rook was sent to the world of Fundament, which was the homeworld of Savathun, by the Witness. And Fundament, of course, was the originating homeworld of the Hive. The reason being because of himself and the Witness had an ever-growing interest towards the Hive, and essentially wanted to try and find out more about them. When Rook landed within Fundament, he journeyed further into the depths of the planet, and came across a Leviathan-type creature, and slain it. It turned out that this creature was a disciple of the Traveler. Once this creature was slain, he journeyed deeper into the planet, and that's where he came across what we know as Worm Gods. He told the Worm Gods that they're now under his and the Witness's control. These worms at the time were struggling for food, their flesh rotting due to pure malnourishment and lack of resource and food. The Worm Gods pretty much had no choice at the time but to join forces with the Witness, else they could end up starving to death. 
So just to recap on this part of the story as well, these are all of the names of all of the worms from the Destiny lore, new and old. However, during this we actually find out about another worm god, one that we've not heard before until now, named Zeta, the mother worm. But more on this a little bit later in the story. It was shortly after this point where the witness deceived Sathona, stating that the Traveller had been hovering over a planet Fundament and would bring a great cataclysm or death, causing devastation and death to the planet itself. However, the darkness would offer a new chance at life, so they travelled into the deep and ingested the hive worms, and that's where they became hive gods, so it does start to link together a little bit nicer now. Fast forwarding to now, what does Rook have to do with this and where does he come in at all? What does he have to do with the lore and the Witch Queen? Well, it turns out that Rook was actually sent to Savathun's throne world to watch over her, pretty much stalking her every move to mentor and guide her, and Rook was sent by the Witness himself. Savathun was destined, in the eye of the Witness, to become another disciple of the Witness. Within the pyramid ship that was in Savathun's throne world, Rook would use the mother worm, Zeta, to create new lava or new worms resulting in an endless army of the Hive. The device just above the worm in this picture is something called the Upended, and actually possesses the power to be able to completely destroy worlds. However, when Savathun wished and planned to one day wield the light, her motives changed and it resulted in her leaving a throne world for long extended periods of time, resulted in Rook, who was sent by the Witness to watch over and essentially monitor Savathun, to become increasingly more agitated with her actions and her not being there, as she could no longer watch over her every move. When Savathun was able to wield the light, she had had enough of Rook and the Witness watching over her every move, and that's where she imprisoned the Disciple in her throne world. And this was essentially the very high level lore of the Vow of the Disciples raid. However, one thing at the very end of this raid as well when we go back to talk to Finch, one of the Hive Ghosts which refuses to revive its light-wielding Hive member. Wow, the unkillable is dead. <laughs> the witness must be shaking in its boots, yeah? Oh man, you guardians, you're always pulling off the unimaginable. I, I never knew the guy personally, but word on the street was Rulk had been the uh, proverbial thorn in Savathun's side for like eons, really. But now, both of them are, you know, in the ground, which means nobody's controlling that pyramid, and the Scorn see the opportunity. Their control could lead us right back to another rogue sized problem, so if you, you know, don't mind, maybe keep the place under our control instead. And, and who knows, maybe in the process we'll learn something more about Rolk. Or even better, the witness. Good luck in there, friend. Now, Finch mentions and gives us a little bit of lore lore around Rook and Savathun, saying that he was essentially the thorn in her side for almost eons. But now that nobody is controlling that pyramid, the Scorn have seen an opportunity to essentially try and take it for themselves. So it's essentially up to the Guardians and the Vanguard to keep it under their control, in order to try and prevent the takeover from the Scorn and another faction. Maybe along the way we can learn a little bit more around the Witness and even some other disciples that the Witness might have. It's very unlikely that the Witness only has one disciple, so maybe going on into the Witch Queen if we get any more raids, or if there's any other additions to the Witch Queen DLC, then we may actually see some more disciples of the Witness come through. So yeah, very interesting to think about. But yeah, very open-ended ending, and I'm very excited to see where the story goes next. But guys, what do you want to see most come out of Destiny 2 for the remainder of the Witch Queen expansion and the lore behind the Vow of the Disciples raid? Where do you want to see the story go next? I'm very much looking forward to seeing how it progresses and jumping back on it each week to see how the story does progress. Again, every time there is some form of progression, you'll hear about it straight here on the channel. But guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. I'd be very interested to know where do you think the story will go and what do you want to see happen to Destiny. Leave a like, guys, if you'd enjoy. Subscribe if you're brand new as well. Speak soon, guys, and take care.